Tick's most disturbing abandoned building the cow is caught on camera. Urbex Hill is one of the most popular urban exploration channels on YouTube, featuring raw footage from YouTuber Chris Hill's visits to a lot of the more extreme abandoned buildings in the U.S. Okay. From abandoned mental hospitals to decommissioned military facilities, Chris explores all of it, but specifically places that a lot of even the more extreme explorers wouldn't visit, at least not at night and alone like Chris always does. Is he mad? In January 2023, he uploaded footage of his visit to the now abandoned Paul Revere Elementary School in Cleveland. After almost a century of use, the school was permanently closed in 2015 due to declining enrollment numbers. Although there are- Yo, listen, as like, he, yeah, he enjoys doing this, right? But even if it's not the paranormal, what if there's like homeless people there, bro? It's still dangerous. Going alone and at night is crazy, bro. Allegedly plans to turn the abandoned building into a housing complex. As of 2024, Paul Revere Elementary is still abandoned and in terrible shape. From the moment Chris walks inside, it's pretty clear that the place hasn't been used in years and has been severely damaged by the elements, vandals, and the passage of time. The bottom floors are all flooded, the walls are peeling, the structure doesn't seem to sound, and there's rust, random papers, books, and all kinds of debris lying everywhere. Oh, this is creepy. Throughout the video, you can see messages written in seemingly fresh chalk on some of the whiteboards, confirming that people have been in the building recently. Bro. This was actually Chris's second visit to Paul Revere Elementary. When he uploaded footage of his March 2022 visit to the school, several people in the comments mentioned they had either been students or teachers at the school and talked about how incredibly sad it was to see their beloved childhood school ruined by abandonment and lack of maintenance. A little after 10 minutes into the exploration, you can hear some sort of ruffling sound and other strange noises coming from somewhere in the schoolhouse. Oh, hell no. Nah. Wait, is that not him? What is that? Bro, you just made it worse. Do you hear that? Wait, what was that? Is that someone else with a flashlight? Somebody's here. Bro, this is what I'm saying, bro. This is what I'm saying, bro. This is what, bro, this is the messed up part. This guy thinks that guy is creepy. That guy might be doing the same as this guy think this guy's creepy. But they're both gonna scare each other. They're both doing the same thing. <laughs> Yo, nah, that's still bro, that's scary, bro. Hell no. He, now, the other guy's gonna think there's as a ghost. Chris whispering. turns a corner in the hallway, another person's flashlight can be seen shining down the hall. It looks to be just one person, who was likely either another urban explorer or right. a squatter. Still, at 1am in an abandoned building, yeah. it's obviously best to avoid drawing unwanted attention to yourself, especially when you don't know the other person's intentions, which is why Chris ultimately decided to run instead of making his presence known. Making sure to walk in the other direction to avoid running into anyone, he then heads to the library and explores the rest of the top floors. As he goes into the- Yo, people have balls, man. Like, how can people do this? Yo, chat. Be honest. Be honest, bro. No lying. Would you go here at night alone? Alone. At night. Would you do that? Bro, that's crazy. At night alone, bro. Wait, chat, chat. Would you do it with people? At night, though. At night with people. Let's say two other friends. That's still crazy. I wouldn't go here at all. I wouldn't even go here with 20 people. The bathroom on the top floor, he has another encounter. Oh. oh! Wait, what the fuck? Somebody's in there. What the fuck? Scared the out of me. 
Why would he not leave? At the far end of the bathroom, what appears to be a human silhouette can be seen standing completely motionless. After the initial shock of the encounter, Chris draws his gun and goes back inside to confront the man. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hello. This guy's fucking crazy. It might be a ma <gasps> Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry. 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 I didn't mean to get that scared. <laughs> Yo, I need to chill out. I need to chill out. I didn't even hit pause. I just hit my keyboard. Right, I need to relax. I need to relax. Right, relax. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. This is scary, bro. What the f oh, it's just a mannequin. Oh, it's a f toy. Oh, I thought it was running at him. Oh my god, that scared the out of me. Oh. As it turns out, the silhouette was actually a scary mannequin that somebody set up, probably to scare away visitors. Oh, fuck. What's most eerie is that even though we can't know for sure how long the mannequin had been standing there before the footage was shot, for some reason it fell forward just in time for Chris to see it. Yeah, the most that's reasonable weird. explanation being from the sound waves bouncing off the wall. Most people would have left as soon as they saw the mannequin, but Chris continued to explore the rest of the school, seemingly unmoved by the horrifying experience he just went through. Though not before clearing the entire rest of the bathroom. That's Sadly, weird, some of the rooms in the school are filled with books, whiteboards, and other perfectly usable materials that could have been donated to another school before I'm the not, building was I'm abandoned. I'm not seeing this, Kana. But nobody seemed to care enough to give them away before the school was abandoned. About half an hour into the visit, Chris climbs up to the roof, which in itself is pretty risky. <coughs> Even if you don't care about getting caught by the cops, there's still a very high risk of the roof caving in, especially considering the state of the building when the footage was shot. Wait, caught by the cops? Are you not allowed to go to abandoned places? Are you not allowed to? Fortunately, he was able to climb down safely, but that's when a strange noise could be heard coming from the other end of one of the hallways. Oh. Safe is still here. I wonder what's in it. Yo, get out of this place. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. As that? Chris explores one of the rooms, a strange howl can be heard in the distance, and as he raises his camera, you can clearly see a shadow moving behind the door at the far end of the room. Are you okay, no, bro? By this point, it's pretty clear that not only are multiple other people in the building with him, but now he's possibly being stalked. Bro, 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 bro. This abandoned building, bro, is active. You got, it's too active, my guy. You gotta go. You gotta leave, bro. It's too active, bro. Once again, Chris draws his gun and prepares for an encounter, but he doesn't find anyone in any of the rooms. After this, he admits he's ready to call it a night and decides to head home, but not before this final encounter. Um, there's another one. This place is weird as hell. Is it not? Oh, shit. Oh, here it is. This place is crazy. I remember the last time I explored it. What was that? Hello? Hello? What? Bro, what the fuck? Okay, I know I heard somebody coming down these stairs. I'm out. As he struggles Hell to find no. his way out of the school, the sound of footsteps can be clearly heard on the stairway directly above Chris's head. But after running up and calling out to see if he gets a response, nobody acknowledges him. Luckily, he was able to walk away unharmed and has continued to upload videos of his visits to abandoned places pretty frequently. Bro, chat, watching this one guy do this, bro, just reminds me why I will never do this. Why I'll never do this. The only, listen, the only time I will ever go with a group to an abandoned place, I've told you guys already, is 1 million subs on YouTube. So good luck getting that. <laughs> Bro, good luck getting that, mate. Good luck.
The Proper People is an urban exploration channel owned by Brian and Michael, two friends who travel the world in search of abandoned buildings. For the past 10 years that their channel has been active, Brian and Michael have built up a reputation for being a trustworthy channel that only uploads genuine footage of their explorations. In a niche of YouTube that's often plagued by cheap, fake footage from people trying to get their 15 minutes of fame, The Proper People has endured as one of the most reliable channels in the urbex space. Okay. They gained their fame from explorations of genuinely cool places instead of faking- Yo, is that crazy, lad? I wouldn't even go- I wouldn't even stay the night in a abandoned place for 10k. Is that crazy? Hand on heart, genuinely, bro. If you gave me 10k right now to stay the night in a abandoned place, I will say nah. Nah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. They gained their fame from explorations of genuinely cool places instead of faking creepy encounters or anything of the such. In 2016, they uploaded a video of their nighttime visit to the Jemison Center in Northport, Alabama, often referred to as Old Bryce Hospital. From 1939 to 1977, the Jemison Center housed hundreds of psychiatric patients and acquired a reputation for treating them pretty harshly. Thank you, K &A. Often referred to as the creepiest building in Alabama, Old Bryce was closed in the late 70s and has since been reclaimed by nature and become a hotspot for urban explorers from all over the world. As Michael and Brian approach the location in their car, there doesn't seem to be anyone around, and after driving around the grounds for a while, the two YouTubers get out of their vehicle to begin exploring, settling on the basement as the first area to explore. Of course. After more than four decades of abandonment, the entire complex is almost completely destroyed, and while- By the way, by the way, because you're all talking about it, right? Listen, listen, listen. The one million subs for me to do anything abandoned, a haunted house or whatever, right? I'll let you guys decide. The 1 million subs isn't on my 200k channel, on my reacts. It's on my horror channel, my scary channel. The one where you see these videos, which is on 25,000. So you're a very, 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 very long way away. <laughs> You're very far away, dude. Four decades of abandonment, the entire complex is almost completely destroyed. And while some of the walls are completely covered in all kinds of graffiti, some of them aren't even there anymore. With the state of disrepair of the Jemison Center, there's always a chance that the structure could collapse on itself and trap Brian and Michael inside. Yeah, that's dangerous. But as dangerous. they go up the stairs to explore the top floor, it becomes clear that an unsound structure is the least of their worries. Why would you go up there? Oh, look at this. Bro, this is dangerous. What was that? Oh. I heard a growl. There's somebody there. No way. Yes, yes, I see their light. Where? They're out there. I swear on my life. Right there. We can't see! Should I say hello? Yeah. There's somebody out there. Where? Could be a monkey. Let's go back to the car. Is that the forest? This way. A bear? Did somebody wanted to talk to us? Let's go to the car now. Oh, yeah. Hold on. As the camera pans to the window, the outline of a person holding up a light can be seen on the staircase on the opposite side of the building. Oh. Disturbingly, as soon as the uploaders turn off their light, the other person does the exact same thing, indicating they were watching and didn't want to be spotted. I could just be Chillingly, the best if you rewind now. the footage to when the YouTubers arrived at the top floor, you can clearly see a light outside the window frame. But it's unclear if the light was coming from the same person who was oh, watching them. It's giving me the chills. After calling out and receiving no response, Brian and Michael decide to go back to their car to avoid getting jumped or worse. It's hard to know what exactly the intentions of the other person were, but what's even more disturbing is the fact that there were no other cars in the area when they arrived and when they left, yeah, which means weird. that whoever was there had arrived on foot and probably been there for a while. That's weird. Ridgely Hospital was a woman's psychiatric hospital in Lancaster, UK that operated for almost 100 years from 1916 to 2013. Famous for being one of the first psychiatric hospitals in the UK that fought for the humane treatment of mentally ill patients, Ridgely Hospital housed thousands of patients and used modern treatment methods such as electroconvulsion therapy to help patients with a range of disorders, from severe depression to obsession to mania. 
In April 2022, YouTuber Exploring with Tom visited the site with three of his friends in the middle of the night. Throughout their visit, they were extremely loud and not aware of their surroundings, which is obviously not the best idea when exploring an abandoned building. Keep in mind that most of these abandoned buildings are still considered government property, which makes it illegal to trespass and explore the grounds. Still, if you disturb a hostile squatter's home by being obnoxiously loud, getting arrested would probably be the least of your worries. I'm not scared of you. What's oh, my... yeah, Wait, it's scared scared of him. I, nah, I think Sean is here after <laughs> What the? After hearing some strange noises coming from one of the rooms, the four explorers call out to see if there's anyone in the building, and this is where things get a little disturbing. Boy, that's what? Be careful, be careful. Okay, there's someone there. Someone there. Just, I, Where? It, it might be, it might need help. Hello? Who? Hello? What? Go! 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 Everyone okay? Everyone okay? Keep calm. Keep calm. Man! What the f? Yo, 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 who's this guy at the back? Okay. What the Bro. Dude, who's this guy at the back? <laughs> yo, which one of their friends is slow as fuck, man? He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Don't pull you up. Get out. Get out. Get out. He's the dead one. What do you want? Oh wait, he's still chasing. Oh wait, was that the guy chasing? I thought that was... Oh! That was the guy that was chasing. As soon as one of the teenagers calls out, a man can be heard screaming from inside the room. Without thinking twice, Tom and his friends make a run for it back to their car, but disturbingly, the man isn't satisfied with just scaring them out of the building and ends up chasing them all the way to their car. Whoa, it's fuck. unknown who the man was or what he wanted from them, but one of the theories that's been echoing in the comments is that he was probably a homeless person who got upset at the amount of noise Tom and his friends were making. It's probably not too pleasant to have four rowdy teenagers burst into the abandoned building you call your home and start yelling, laughing, and swearing. But still, it's good they were able to get away unharmed. In 2006, a 36-year-old man named Vincent Filia was living in the woods as a fugitive near Lugoff, South Carolina, after being accused of abusing his stepdaughter. I was in September say he looks of that like same a year, he saw a 14-year-old girl named Elizabeth Schof getting off the school bus and decided to abduct her. Oh my god. Posing as a police officer, Filia arrested Schof on a supposed marijuana charge and led her to his hideout in the middle of the woods. For 10 days, Elizabeth was chained up and abused by Filia in the underground bunker beneath the hideout in what can only be described as a nightmare come true. Still, oh, the girl was extremely resilient throughout the whole ordeal and came up with a plan to escape from the horrifying situation she found herself in. If she wanted to escape, Elizabeth knew that she had to get Vincent to like her. For several days, she pretended to be in love with Philia, and eventually Small. the kidnapper lowered his guard, even unchaining her and allowing her to play games on his phone. Wow. One night while Vincent was sleeping, the teenager got a hold of his phone and sent a text to her mom saying she was in a hole across the charm hill, that there was a bomb and to call the police. As it was later revealed, Filia had planned to draw in as many people as possible to the bunker to detonate a bomb and take the lives of the responding officers. However, he never managed to carry out his plan, for just a few minutes later the area was surrounded by helicopters and he was forced to surrender. Oh, to make a long story short, Elizabeth was able to move on with her life, wow. and the monster named Vincent Filia spent the rest of his life in prison, where he died in 2021 in his cell. In December 2023, a YouTuber named Big Banks visited the abandoned hideout where the terrifying crime took place. Immediately upon entering the house, the uploader finds something extremely disturbing. Yo, I don't even know if I want to see that, bro. Oh, where she got fucking chained up, mate? I think this was the little girl's backpack that was left here. What a sad sight to see knowing that that happened. A little girl's backpack can be seen on the floor outside the kitchen. Although it's impossible to confirm if it belonged to Elizabeth Shove, it is possible that it was planted there after the crime by somebody else. 
As he explores the living room, the uploader finds more creepy stuff, including a DVD of the horror movie The Strangers, a Halloween decoration next to one of the couches, a shank, a broken baseball bat, and a ripstick. Obviously, the fact that these items were left behind is much more disturbing when you consider the history of the house. Right. It's heartbreaking to imagine that some of the toys lying around the floor possibly belonged to the girl that Vincent Filia had stolen. Throughout the rest of the house, several objects and pieces of furniture, including the bed in the main room, look like they were placed there much later than 2006. It's possible that the house was occupied by squatters, but because it was empty at the time the footage was shot, it's impossible to know what belonged to Philia, his common-law family, his victim, and the squatters. Thankfully, after being reunited with her family in 2006, Elizabeth went on to live a fruitful life, and the man who committed the heinous crime against her paid the price for it. Man, Holton Avenue so shit, is a notoriously dude. creepy abandoned street in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, that was more sad than creepy facts. In 1913, the first Hungarian Baptist church was built on that street, eventually falling into disuse and being left abandoned like the rest of the buildings on that street. In April 2016, the body of a woman named Jessica Coleman was found there after she went missing, but unfortunately, her attacker was never found. In July 2023, Chris Hill went to the location to record footage of the abandoned church, as well as the rest of the buildings on Holton Avenue. From disturbing graffiti to broken glass and peeling walls, the church checks every box you would expect from a creepy, abandoned building. As he ventures into the basement, oh, Chris nah. finds signs that someone else had been inside the church, hell including nah. an action figure of Melvin the Giraffe from Madagascar that he mentions he doesn't remember seeing the last time he visited the location. Knowing that he's often not alone during his explorations, Chris set up several cameras throughout the church, and about 10 minutes into the exploration, one of the cameras on the main floor captures something pretty creepy. That's weird. Hey, someone's there with you, mate. They're angry. That was upstairs. Yeah, they're angry at you, mate. Obviously, don't fall, doors don't just randomly shut themselves, and as it wasn't particularly windy that night, it's clear that someone was in the church with Chris. But after looking around for a bit, he can't find anyone in the church, and decides to head back outside to explore the rest of the buildings on Holton Avenue. Why would you even want to if find If the church them? was in a messed up state, some of the houses are even worse, with most of them looking like they could collapse at any second. Around half an hour into the visit, he decides to explore one of the most dilapidated houses on the block. And as he's in the basement, the exploration takes a scary turn. Uh oh. It actually looks like it's just underneath the house. It's not really a basement. Still creepy. What? 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 Is he possessed? What the fuck is that? Oh! Sorry. I didn't know nobody lived there. Oh shit. Oh shit. It smelled like I knew somebody was in there. Oh shit. As he's exploring the basement, a sound can be heard coming from the ground floor. And when he goes back up to find out what it is, a person pulls back the curtain. Immediately apologizing, Chris runs back out to the street, and that's when he realizes that, despite the horrible state of the supposedly abandoned house, there was actually someone living in there with electricity. Clearly most, if not all of the abandoned buildings on the block were housing people now who didn't want him there, something he never encountered on his first visit. Mod. And with this newfound discovery, Chris called it a night. This is what in I'm February saying, bro. This is what I'm saying. This is backing up my statement of why I'm never going to an abandoned place, man. Bro, there, there's people just living there. 20, Urban Explorer Rhythm Rider explored an abandoned house at an undisclosed location with his exploration partner, Zay Clark. According to Rhythm, the house used to belong to an old woman who had passed away. In complete contrast to most abandoned houses, most of the woman's possessions had been left untouched, indicating that the house had not yet fallen prey to looters and squatters who often take things that aren't theirs. All throughout the house, the two explorers find everything from beautiful tableware and silverware to ornately woven tapestries and a fully equipped bar. Based on the calendars they found in the house, the property hadn't been occupied since August 2018. 
Just a few minutes into the visit, Rinnem and Zay find something incredibly sad and disturbing. I was always worried about something like this happening, um, and then it did. When we walked in here, we took a few steps in the door, and we saw this on the ground. Now, for those who can't figure that, <clears throat> excuse me, figure out what that is, that is a body stain. And you can see right there, there's a walker. So, unfortunately, it seems that the woman who had lived here had taken a bad fall, landed on the floor, <clears throat> and that's where she expired, unfortunately. Um, it's extremely, extremely sad to us. It's expired. Bro, she's not gone off milk. What do you mean expired? It took us a good 20 minutes to uh, decide what we're going to do here and um you know despite it feeling weird we figured we still need to tell the story because this is a good reminder to everybody that you need to check on your loved ones it seemed this woman had passed and was laying here for god knows how long before she was found so check in on your loved ones guys right in the middle of the hallway a human body stain can oh, be seen wow. on the floor next to a walker indicating that the old woman probably had a bad fall and couldn't get up Sadly, she passed away and her body decomposed before anyone could save her, which is a terrifying way to die. Wait, 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 wait. so her body was never found, her body just disappeared? I thought it would leave bones. Where's the bones? Oh. And her body decomposed before anyone could save her, which is a terrifying- Oh, they just did find her quickly. Oh. Oh, bless her. Way to die. There appear to be signs that the woman's family members tried to sort through her things after she passed away, but overall, her various belongings are in perfectly good shape, including her bathroom supplies, which were still there at the time of the recording. It's hard to watch the footage without having conflicting feelings. Even though the house is beautiful, and you can easily tell that the woman who lived there with her husband was a talented, outgoing person, it's incredibly sad to see how she met her end. Overall, the footage should serve as a reminder to check in on your loved ones every time you get the chance, because nobody deserves to pass away like that. Since 2020, Ridden with Ryder hasn't gone back to that location. Bless the dude. Bro said it expired. Yeah, I was gonna say that start Star Wars. I swear the stain looked like I had a face. Weird.